So recently, over 2,700 users completed a survey run by De Bauer, which investigated boost clock behavior for third gen Ryzen CPUs. The results are a little bit worse and more spread out than I expected, where the vast majority of submissions from users who have bought a third gen Ryzen CPU are showing that they are not able to hit the advertised max boost clock frequency that is on the box. So today's video is a discussion on the results and a look at the difference between the specs and the technical market and also why this is a problem if you are a consumer. So first off, a huge credit to Roman, aka De Bauer, who most likely needs no introduction on this channel. But if you haven't checked his channel out or don't know who he is, you can find him linked down below in the description. So this is a really interesting survey and it's an important one as well because this is a survey from consumers, people who have bought third gen Ryzen CPUs, and they wanna see where their processor and system stacks up against other processors and systems. Of course, you can watch the full video on the analysis in the description, it is quite in depth. The testing was fairly simple though, run Cinebench R15 on a single thread, and note down the maximum clock speed that you observed in hardware info. So in summary, here's what the data showed. For users with the Ryzen 3600, about half of them were able to hit the advertised boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz or more. For the 3600X, under 10% of users were able to hit the advertised boost clock there, 14.7% for the 3700X, 26.7% for the 3800X, and only 5.6% of users were able to hit the advertised boost clock for the 3900X. So of course, a community survey like this is never going to be perfect. There are going to be fake results submitted by trolls that you just can't avoid, and you can't control for variables like what CPU cooler is being used, what motherboard is being used, or what Windows version they're running. But the issue still permits, if you cannot take a CPU and put it in a compatible motherboard and then hit the advertised boost clocks, then there is a problem. And in some of the histograms shown, we're seeing over a 300 megahertz difference for the bottom 10% of CPUs. That is really insane to think about. Now, if you don't think this is an issue, you're probably an enthusiast like me, and you realize that, okay, one or 200 megahertz, maybe 50 megahertz below the advertised boost clock, maybe that's nothing to cry about because you realize that the performance differences in games and applications isn't going to be that much. But think about how this sounds to an average consumer, that you are not actually getting what you are sold. To put this into perspective, imagine if Nvidia advertised the RTX 2080 Ti with a boost clock of 2000 MHz, when in fact only some models are able to hit that. Instead, the advertised boost clock for the 2080 Ti is just 1545 MHz. That's a couple hundred MHz below what even the lowest end cards will boost to in game. So I did some brief testing on my own with the 3900X review sample that I've got here on the X570 Aorus Extreme, and even with a reviewer sample chip on the best X570 motherboard that you can buy, the maximum single threaded frequency that I was able to achieve was 4,575 MHz. So it's only a 25 MHz difference, but do understand this is best case. I ran the same test with Intel's 9900K, and we do see it hit the advertised five GHz frequency out of the box on a mini ITX Z390 board. So just like Ryzen, the max boost frequency is not sustained, but at least it is actually actually achieved. The multi-threaded boost clock is also a big issue here, where we're seeing the 3900X about 500 megahertz lower than the max advertised boost clock. In a way, this is actually a good thing. AMD's boost frequency algorithm is a lot more advanced than Intel's at this stage, where it is constantly prioritizing the most suitable cores, as well as scaling directly with CPU temperature. This temperature and frequency behavior is what you'd expect from a GPU. The purpose of this is to avoid running into a thermal limit, but also reward lower thermals with higher clock speeds. The issue that I have here is just how little this is known to the average consumer. If a consumer sees 4.6 gigahertz on the 3900X's box, for example, they probably don't expect to be hitting 4.1 under a heavy workload. They probably expect something around 4.3 or 4.4. In the case of the 9900K, for example, I think we can all forgive around a 300 megahertz reduction from the max boost clock for an all core workload. Sure, it's not the max boost frequency, but it's not too far off. So looking at all of these results, I can see two main problems here that I'd like to address in this video. The first one is that AMD are just overpromising and overselling. Now, the third gen Ryzen CPUs are great. I still recommend them to you guys. And this survey from DeBauer and all of the users who participated, which again, I'll just remind you, these are 2,700 users who bought the CPUs and submitted their own results. So this isn't 
independent testing from myself or another reviewer. This is you guys testing your own CPUs. The performance that you get from these CPUs is great, but it's just that AMD are overpromising and overselling them when they absolutely do not need to. Most of you have heard of the statement under promise and over deliver. That's the exact opposite of what AMD are doing right here. The second problem is the sheer discrepancy and lottery that is involved with buying a third gen Ryzen CPU. And this is likely a problem that is simply too late to fix. Admittedly, we would need a much larger sample size and more controlled variables to validate this data. But by looking at several of the same third gen Ryzen CPU on the same motherboard, we're seeing large discrepancies in the single threaded boost clock. The fact that we're seeing a boost clock difference of over 300 megahertz out of the box for the same motherboard is not okay. Now, most users are pretty familiar with the term silicon lottery and overclocking lottery. That is, if you grab the same model CPU off the same shelf, they're not going to be able to overclock as far, but we're not talking about overclocking here. We're just talking about slotting the CPU into a motherboard and seeing how far it'll push itself with its own boosting algorithm. And the fact that most of them are not able to hit that max advertised boost clock frequency out of the box, it does lead to misleading expectations. The actual performance of these CPUs is still great and I can still recommend them to the majority of you for the right scenario, but the expectations are simply not being met. A lot of third gen Ryzen customers have come from Intel systems. They're used to buying a CPU, throwing it into their motherboard, and their experience largely matches their expectation. They don't need to worry about staying updated with the latest BIOS versions, the chipset drivers, specific Windows versions, and then still not potentially being able to hit what was printed on the box for a single threaded workload. I think I speak for most reviewers when I say that when we encounter these problems on a day one review for these CPUs, we just expect these issues to be ironed out quickly after launch in a week one or week two update update, but sadly that is not the case. And these misleading expectations unfortunately continue in other areas. With precision boost overclocking, for example, we're literally told from AMD that 4.75 gigahertz is attainable with auto overclocking, which as we know is just not the case. Again, as enthusiasts, most of us know and we shrug it off, but how would you feel if this was your very first PC build and 4.75 gigahertz or more is what you were expecting? You would more than likely think that something was wrong with with your build. Another similar example comes down to the absurdly high idle voltage, power consumption, and thermals, which are still not fixed. Comparing idle voltages between the 3900X and the 9900K under identical conditions, there is a clear problem here. Looking at some comments made by AMD's technical marketing, again, we get the sense of trying to remanage the customer's expectations. But the fact is, high idle voltage is causing higher than normal power consumption as well. This isn't what users expect, and it's why I keep bringing it up. If your third gen Ryzen CPU thermals and fan speed are higher than normal at idle, this is why. Looking at CPU thread usage there briefly, it's under 5% for the most part. That's absolutely no excuse for the CPU to be boosting up to 1.5 volts and causing this mess. We're getting off track here, but my point here is that there is this massive disconnect between the technical specifications of a third gen Ryzen CPU and the marketing behind it. Not only that, but there is a potential lottery involved with what your third gen Ryzen CPU will potentially boost to. Now, again, we can say that some of the lower performing results were down to the chipset drivers were the incorrect ones downloaded, maybe they didn't update their BIOS, but that in my opinion is not enough to excuse up to a 200 to 300 megahertz difference. If these updates were so important and vital, why didn't AMD just delay the launch just a little bit longer to get this right? In my opinion, this is how it should be. If you grab 10 3800Xs and test them on the same motherboard, they should all perform identically. Boost clock and performance benchmarks should be the same. If you grab one 3800X and test it on 20 compatible AMD motherboards, it should perform pretty much the same. Maybe we should see as much as a 2%, 3% difference, but at the very least, they should be able to hit the advertised boost clock for a single thread. One last thing that I'll note here is the potential performance difference and how small it is going to be, looking at a 100 to 200 megahertz difference, but that's not the problem here. The problem is not knowing exactly what you're buying. With the 9900K, for example, all of them perform the same out of the box, identical in terms of clock speeds and benchmarks. And as a consumer, that is what you expect. Of course, if you compare 10 9900K 
samples, you're going to see some differences with vCore and power consumption, but the actual performance that you're getting and the clock speeds are identical. So again, if you haven't had the chance to watch the Bowers video, you can check that out down below. Really important information in my opinion. The primary issue with the clock speed differences could have been fixed by AMD just by listing a lower boost frequency on the box. If AMD had have done that, the performance would be the same for these CPUs. I'm not saying that the performance should change at all. I'm just saying that the expectations would have at least been met if the advertised boost clock was lower. In some cases, the expectations would have been higher for the silicon that is better and can be pushed a little bit further. So I'd love to know your thoughts on these findings and how important you think they are down below, especially if you have a third gen Ryzen CPU or if you are planning to buy one. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.